introduce uh, Jose Figueroa Ofer, who's going to be speaking to us about space-time G-structures. Okay, thanks very much, Dennis, for the introduction. And I'm very happy you managed to pronounce my name correctly. There are very few people who actually... I always tell the students in my course that my first name is Jose and that the second name is unpronounceable, so they shouldn't even try, but uh, I'm, I'm glad to see that uh, you managed. It's tricky being two different languages. Okay, right. So, um, so what I wanted to talk about is uh, the notion of, uh, well, some old and new notions of space-time. So the, the word space-time, I think, perhaps was coined by Minkowski in this famous address that he gave in, I think, 1908, so, soon before he died, actually, uh, to the German Mathematical Society, where he introduced his uh, eponymous space-time, the Minkowski space-time. Um, but of course, that was not the earliest uh, notion of a space-time, even though the word uh, hadn't been used yet. So uh, I'll start kind of historically by uh, perhaps mentioning the first kind of serious uh, serious um, uh, notion of space-time, which is the one, the, the Galilei space-time in, in perhaps a version due to, to Weil. But basically the idea of the talks is going to be, I'll, I'll present some um, Klein models of space-time. So it's gonna be, well, I'll refresh you about Minkowski at some point, Galilei and so-called Carroll space-time, which you may or may not have seen. And then I will discuss the corresponding uh, Cartan geometries associated to these space times, which are all G structures and they're, well, Lorentzian, Galilean, and uh, Carolian geometry. And I'll discuss their, uh, the intrinsic torsion of adapted connections in these, uh, in these G structures. And if there is time at the end, uh, I will, I hope there is, that I, I will try to give a slightly larger picture um, by discussing so-called P-brain uh Galilean let's say structures it, whether you call it p-brain Galilean or p-brain Carolian it doesn't really matter because the point is that uh the, the, the this when you start talking about p-brains they in some sense you can talk about the two at the same time there's a certain duality it's like a a, a p-brain Galilean is the same thing as a d minus two minus p-brain Carolian or something I mean we'll, we'll see that uh, at some point hopefully but anyway, so without uh, any further ado, let me just talk about um, uh, Galilei spacetime, just to, to 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 put things in historical perspective. So according to Vi to, to to the vial formulation of Galilei spacetime, um, all, all the three spacetimes that I'm going to mention at the beginning, the Klein models, they're all going to be. You you can talk about them in arbitrary dimensions. I'm I'm going to be a little bit conservative and and for the rate for the sake of exposition, just talk about the four dimensional ones. Um, but essentially, they're all um, affine four-dimensional space together with some additional structure. So the question is, what is the additional structure? Okay, so let, let's start with, um, let's see if I can write here. So Galilean. Uh, how's that? Yeah? That's okay, yeah. So it's, 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 it's rather small. But yes. If you, you want me to write bigger? Yeah. Okay. Is this better? That's great. Okay, so Galilei spacetime. Um, all right, so okay, so what is it? Well, again, this is only the four-dimensional one, but you could of course do this in arbitrary dimension. So it's going to be a uh, four-dimensional affine space together with um, two pieces of data, uh, something called the clock and something called uh, the ruler, which I'm going to call it like that. So. Let me just say, so this is called the clock, and I'll tell you what they are in a moment, and this is called the ruler. Okay, so what is the clock? The clock is a, um, if you want, you can think of it as a one form on this affine space. So um, so the clock is going to be a linear map. Uh, so this affine space, of course, is a, it's a torsor over the R4, the, the, the group of uh, translations. Um, and tau is going to be a linear map. And um, let me introduce some notation. So for example, if um, if A and B are points in affine space, in the context of spacetimes, uh, these points are called spacetime events. So let's say spacetime uh, events, just the name. Then there is a unique vector in R4 that translates A to B. So let's call this uh, V, let's call it B minus A. Right, so B minus A has a it's just an it's just a shorthand notation for the unique vector such that uh, A plus V is equal to B. 
And then what uh, what what this clock one firm does is it tells you the um, the time interval between these two space time events. So tau b minus a, this is to be interpreted as the as the as the time interval um, between the space time events uh, a and b. And if uh, the time interval is zero, we say that these uh, space-time events are simultaneous. So the kernel of tau, right? This, this are, um, so if, if B minus A is in the kernel of tau, uh, is the same thing as saying that A and B are simultaneous. And of course we all know, I mean, you know, our, our, our everyday life is, the everyday, everyday, the world that we see around us, and sort of every every day is Galilei, uh, space times Galilean. So there is a notion of you know pe pe people, we simultaneity is something we use all the time. When you 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 say somebody, I'll, I'll meet you at four o'clock somewhere. I mean you know there's there's the, you're assuming that both people agree on what four o'clock means, and therefore there is there's a notion of simultaneity. Okay, so um, what is the so so this this explains the hope the clock one form. Then the question is what is the ruler. Well, the ruler is the Euclidean distance between simultaneous events. So, um, so, 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 what is the ruler? The ruler is going to be a um, 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 well. Okay, so if if oh, sorry, wrong color. Um, if A B are simultaneous. then uh, we can consider uh, this, this gamma is gonna be some sort of inner product on the kernel of tau. So um, this is, this is, this is, well, this is going to be the square of the Euclidean distance. Uh, between A and B. But it only makes sense to talk about the Euclidean distance between two events which are simultaneous. Okay, so there's a picture associated to this. Um, so, so you have some sort of sort of a cartoon. So here, here is a, a four, and then you have um, the affine line, which is sort of like the the timeline. Uh, you don't know where the origin of time is, but it doesn't matter. Uh, it's it's just an affine line, and there's a there's a certain vibration uh, which is induced by this clock uh, uh, tau. So let's call this pi, I guess. And then the idea is that, um, I don't know, uh, if you have some uh, event, oh. sorry, I'm using a new version of this uh, software and it uh, erases whenever I do something funny. Okay, so suppose, I don't know, uh, let me call them. We call this. You see, it does something really strange. Anyway, look. it does something really weird. Sorry. Uh, okay, let's try again. So A and B are two points. Then there's going to be a unique vector here, which is B minus A. And then the um, when you when you project down, so this would be pi of A, and this would be pi of B. And then the vector here, the this is going to be tau of b minus a. Right? That's kind of the picture. And then what, what happens is that you get that this 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 vibration, the, it 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 foliate, it allows you to foliate the space-time into hypersurfaces of simultaneity. So this is, for example, if you have some point down here in the in the in the timeline, uh, you can look at its uh, image under the projection. So I'm going to draw it a bit kind of a thick. So this would be um, this would be a three. Uh, I don't know. Let, let me not call it anything. I mean this this green thing here. It's supposed to be um, okay. So if I have some point, some some event C. These are all the all the events simultaneous with C.
So you get this affine, affine three-dimensional hypersurfaces, which are going to be the hypersurfaces of simultaneity. Okay, anyway, so associated to this geometry, to this space-time, there is, of course, a, uh, a relativity group. And this is a subgroup of the affine group, which preserves the clock and the ruler. And it's called the Galilei group. So uh, maybe I should just... Okay, I'm going to have to change, I'm afraid, to the next uh, screen. But um, it's a problem with this that I can only show you one screen full at a time. Uh, but anyway, um, so let, let G be the subgroup of the affine group uh, preserving uh, tau and gamma. And this is, by definition, the Galilei group. Okay, so we can make this very, very uh, concrete, if you wish, by perhaps introducing some uh, model for this affine four-dimensional space. For example, we can take A4 and view it as an affine hyperplane in R5, right? So we can do the standard thing of viewing uh, A4 uh, sitting inside R5 as those points whose fifth coordinate, let's say, it's equal to one. So um, typical point here would be something like, uh, well, let me let me introduce... Um, how do I want to call this? I guess I want to call it X like this, then T, and then one. That, that's that's going to be my typical notation for uh, this this model of A four. So X hat it's a three vector. T is kind of a, a real number. It's supposed to be time and space. No? And then uh, we can make this very clear. For example, we can say that um, it, suppose you have uh, I don't know Y. Uh, u1 minus x uh, t1, for example. So this is the difference between two space-time points. And then this is going to be a vector in the hyperplane uh, x5 equals 0. So it's going to be something like y minus x, uh, u minus t, and then 0. And those things you can add, of course. These are the translations. And um, what is what is tau of, you know, of this guy? Well, it's going to be by definition u minus t. And suppose that u is equal to t, so that the two events are simultaneous, then uh, what is gamma of um, you know, y uh, u1 minus uh, x u, because they're the same. Uh, OK, so let me, let me just already subtract them. So 0, 0 minus x, like this. And then you have y minus x. And this, by definition, is going to be the, the Euclid, well, the, this, this by, sorry, this by definition is going to be uh, the dot product. So the Euclidean, the square of the Euclidean distance, right? So like that. Okay, so that's, that's a very concrete uh, model for Galilei spacetime in terms of coordinates. And then what is the group? Well, I give it to you as an exercise. Uh, the, the Galilei group, well, it's a subgroup of the affine group, but in this model, the affine group is now a, sub, a subgroup of GL5R. So it's going to be uh, corresponding to some matrices and the exercises to determine what these matrices are, but they're basically something like this. So R is in O3. And A and B are in R3, and this is in R3. So that's the that's the that's the Galilei group as a subgroup of uh, GL5R. So it's a matrix group. And we can, of course, uh, we can we can pick a point and uh, view the uh, Galilei spacetime as a homogeneous space of the Galilei group. So you can pick, for example, um, as origin the the vector with all you know x equals zero and t equals zero, and then th what is a stabilizer? Well, the stabilizer of O you can work out very easily. Looks like uh, the the orthogonal transformations and this v, and that's that's it.
sometimes people call this the homogeneous Galilei group, but let's not go there. But uh, I'm just saying that you may want to. And this, of course, will be the G in the G structure as we were talking about. It's going to be so the G in the G structure is this G zero. Okay, so if you want to understand physically, maybe what uh, what 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 the Galilei group, how it acts on Galilei spacetime, what you can do is you can decompose this uh, typical element of the of the Galilei group into a product. So um, so for example, R V a s one one zero so everywhere else um this 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 you can break up as well first of all a translation so take here the identity zero a s the translations commute so I'm, let me just put them together um so so this matrix corresponds to a space space time translation right you're translating by a in the space and by s so this is a space time translation Then um, you can now uh, boost. So this would be this is a Galilean boost. These are just physics words for what these things are. And of course, the other thing is just uh, orthogonal transformation. Sorry. Um, And then you can ask, what does this do on a um, acting on, you know, X, T, and one? Well, this sends to Rx plus Vt plus A, T plus S, and then one. Right. So it's, it's I guess, I don't know, it, it's the naive things, what you would expect. The important thing to notice, and this isn't, distinction with, of course, the boosts in uh, relativistic uh, space time like Minkowski is that the boosts here are an abelian subgroup. And in fact, that what that says is that uh, velocities add. So notice that uh, the, what, what can I say this? Uh, this is very unfortunate notation. This A is, sounds like acceleration. It should be X zero or something. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> Notation, I mean, I, I'm sorry, yeah, so uh, there's no, there's not going to be any but acceleration. A, a is really bad. Sorry? A is really bad, B, whatever, but if V is V and then it's A, then it's just bad. Okay, so um, I don't know, I mean, change, I mean, change to whatever notation you want. I mean, I'm not going to be discussing acceleration in the, in, in this thing, so um in fact, the physics is going to be uh, kind of minimized, but anyway, it's it's just a you know it's just a, tra a spatial translation parameter. Um, I don't know. I I honestly I'm completely agnostic about notation. So, uh, but the only thing that I want to point out is that the boosts uh, are, are an abelian subgroup, and hence they add, right? So um, so let me just put it here. So boosts um, define an abelian subgroup. So it's just R3 and they add. I mean, you take a boost with parameter V1 and another one parameter V2, you get a boost with parameter V1 plus V2. And of course, famously, that's not what happens in uh, in real life. Uh, Maxwell's equations say that uh, the speed of light is constant in in in, uh, in in any two inertial frames. So um, so this is why uh, Minkowski introduced his, his space time. So anyway, that, that's I think that's all I want to say about uh, Galilei for now. But just keep keep this in mind. Uh, later I'll summarize. Um, okay, so so this contradicts Maxwell's equations, and being in Edinburgh, I have to you know I cannot uh, contradict Maxwell. So um, so Maxwell's equations are not Galilei invariant. They're invariant under translations and under orthogonal transformations in space, 
but they are not invariant under the Galilei boosts. So, um, so therefore, Minkowski felt compelled to introduce a different notion of spacetime. Um, so this is Minkowski spacetime. Now we understand Minkowski spacetime now as a you know simply connected flat uh, Lorentzian manifold, but uh, in using the same language as we used it for. Um, for Galilei spacetime, we can think of it as a is the same underlying space of spacetime events, namely an affine four dimensional space. But now the structure that we have is different. Instead of a clock and a ruler, what we have is just one structure, which is uh, so called proper distance. So let's call it delta. And again, you might com com you know complain that this is the Laplacian, but okay, <laughs> let's call it delta for now. Um, so this is the this 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 is a proper oh, different color. Uh, this is a proper distance. Some people prefer to use proper time, which of course is the negative. So, but, but let's use proper distance. Okay, so um, so so what is a proper distance? It's um, it's a Lorentzian inner product on R four. Right. So this is a Lorentzian. And if we use uh, the same model for the affine space that we did before, the affine hyperplane in, in, in R5, then we can actually write down um, explicitly. Uh, so for example, uh, so as before, let's take, um, I don't know, let, let's call it like this again. So, so this typical element in, in A4, uh, we, can, um, we can consider, so delta of, I don't know, um, Yeah. Okay. So let's just let, let's just do this as before. I mean, I'm gonna regret doing this, but okay. Um, now we we can introduce a parameter, the speed of light. So this is going to be minus c squared u minus d squared plus the uh, Euclidean distance of that. And this is this is a parameter we can normally set to one, but it'd be nice to keep it for a while, this so-called speed of light. So what happens? Well, now we don't have a clock. So we have no notion of uh, simultaneity. That's something that we can, we can forget about. Um, what we have is now a notion of causality. So around every... Uh, it's centered at every point in at every space time event in Minkowski space, there is a light cone. Uh, so let me uh, just draw the picture, but you've seen it before, I'm sure. Um, so here's some point, let's call it A. And then what we have is a, um, it's a bit of a light cone centered at A. Okay. Call it L A. So what are these? These are all the space-time points whose proper distance um, is the, with with the proper distance with A is is two A is zero. And then okay, then you get uh, a notion of causality um, in the sense that um, uh, if if a if a an, if a space-time another space-time event lies outside the the light cone for example it could be something like this then these two points are causally unrelated uh there is no way that anything happening at a can affect anything happening at b and vice versa so a b in this in this are are so causally uh disconnected but for example um if we have some point i don't know here c so a c are causally related in the sense that uh, C is in the causal uh, future of A. 
And similarly, if we have some other point down here, D, for example, or, you know, it could be, sorry, let's just make it clear. It could also be on the light curve, uh, D, for example. So also A and D. Anyway, so that's what we have now. We have a notion of causality as opposed to simultaneity. So the, you cannot, no, no two observers will agree whether something has happened, two, two events have happened at exactly the same time, but they certainly would agree whether one event can influence the other. Okay, so um, so so now we have a we have a you know a relativity group which is the group the subgroup of the affine group which preserves uh, the proper distance and that's called the Poincaré group. So the Poincaré group in I don't know let's call it let's call it P. Um, uh, this is a subgroup of the affine group uh, preserving the. And uh, the um, you, we can we can um, I guess we could uh, we could write it explicit. I mean, well, it's just going to be as a subgroup of GL five R. It's going to look something like okay. And now you're going to complain that I'm using A again, but anyway, that's my standard uh, notation for. So it's going to be something like this where. Uh, L transpose delta, think of it a, as a uh, bilinear form, as the inner product on, on R4, and then this should be delta, and A is in R4. And I'm not going to write for you the, you know, the form of the of L. I mean, L just satisfies that. But later, perhaps, I will just... Uh, when I when I con contrast the different uh, Klein models, uh, they're, they're all the only difference is going to be the boosts, and we've already seen how the Galilean boosts are, uh, and I'll show you later if you want an expression for the Lorentz boosts um, in case you're curious. But it, it's just much more complicated, of course. Anyway, um, but the important thing is that it's no longer an abelian group, subgroup. So so the velocities of the boost, the, the parameters of the boost, which are called rapidities, they don't they don't add. They they have a, they, yeah, they don't add. Um, okay, so, um, okay. Now, one thing you can do, by the way, is if you look at the equation for this light cone, so what is the equation for the light cone? Let, let's let's choose the light cone based at the origin, where the origin was this other point that I chose with coordinate zero, zero. Um, so, so like, again, let's, let's take this to be zero, zero, one. And then you're asking, what is, what is the equation? For this light cone, um, okay. So, uh, so these are all the points such that uh, minus okay. So, so c squared. Okay. So these are all the points of the form x t one such that uh, c squared t squared is equal to x dot x. And then one thing you can do with this is um, you can rewrite this, C, C is a non-zero number, it's a, it's a speed of light. So you can rewrite this as T squared is equal to one over C squared X that is. And then you can formally take the limit C goes to infinity. And if you take the limit C goes to infinity, uh, one thing that happens is that all of a sudden the light cone becomes just the T equals zero plane. So the light cone basically uh, flattens out. Uh, but another thing that happens is that the group the Poincaré group in, in, in this language, it contracts to the Galilei group, or the, uh, say the Poincaré algebra contracts to the, to, the, to, the, to the Galilei algebra. So this is called the non-relativistic limit. And what happens to, it, it's described just really, as I said, I mean, just the, the, the light cone flattens, but then the relativity groups also get change and there's a contraction in this a degeneration if you want the Poincaré algebra degenerates to uh to the to the Galilei algebra okay but uh okay but that's not the end of the story because you can imagine now taking the opposite limit rather than c goes to infinity you could take c goes to zero and if you look at the equation uh for the light cone right and you take c goes to zero then uh this goes to zero so what happens is that x dot x is zero which means x becomes the x is zero so so the light cone instead of flattening it closes into itself and it becomes a timeline 
So that limit was uh, introduced by uh, Jean-Marc Levier-Blanc in 65, and he called it the Carroll limit in honor of uh, Lewis Carroll. So that's the other third space time that I want to uh, consider today. So, um, so, so take uh, C goes to zero, and this was done by uh, Levier-Blanc in 65, I think. And, and this is called, well, it has many names. Uh, you can call it the ultra relativistic limit. So people call it the ultra local limit uh, or the Carroll limit. Um, I don't know, many, many things. Um, but anyway, when you do this, uh, you get uh, Carroll space time. Carroll space time. So what is Carroll space time? Well, again, it's uh, Euclidean uh, uh, affine force space, but with now uh, a, a different. Uh, um, a different structure. So, 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 what is it? It's a four, but now you have two things. So, let me call it k and h. Um, k is a non-zero vector. And h is a uh, Euclidean inner product on uh, the quotient uh, of R four mod the line generated by k. So this is a Euclidean um, inner product. On R4 mod R. OK, so we can, uh, again, use the standard model for uh, the Euclidean force space as uh, the affine, affine uh, hyperplane in R5. Uh, and then uh, you can write down the, um, uh, for example, you could choose, let's say, okay. So so again, A, A4 sitting inside R5 as before. And let me, let me take as an example, uh, this K to be uh, 0, 1, 1. Sorry, 0, so it's in R4, so it's in, uh, so in the vector space. And, um, and uh, you know, and, and H basically is going to be the, the I mean, when you quotient by kappa, basically you just, you just look at the first three components of the vector and you, you, you take the, the standard dot product. Okay, so I don't want to necessarily say too much about this, but let me, let's just look at the group, right? So, so now C, let's say, this is going to be uh, uh, the, the Carroll group, which is going to be the subgroup of the affine uh, group uh, preserving a cup on H, and this is called the Carroll group. So what does it look like in terms of matrices? Well, it looks very similar to, um, so to, to Galilei in some sense, but not quite. So it has uh, orthogonal transformations, then the uh, transpose of V, um, then zero, one, and then I'm sorry, A again. Transpose and S. And you can now decompose again, just to see what this does on the space time. You could, you could, you could decompose uh, this uh, generic element. Sorry. Into again a translation, so we can take identity zero a s one one and zeros everywhere else, um, and then okay, it's convenient to first now do a rotation, so we do our uh, orthogonal transformation. So let's take that one, and now we do a boost. So. Okay, so now the question is, well, what, what, what the, you know, so what, what are the Carolian boosts now? So, so this is a Carol boost. This is again orthogonal transformation, and this is again space time translation. Okay, so what does it do on uh, what, what does let, let's let's see what um, what this does on x, t, and one, right? So. This gets sent to Rx, 
plus A. So now you see before the Galilei boost, they 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 act on the X but leaves T alone. But this is the other way around. So uh, this becomes T plus uh, V dot X plus S in the other one. Right, so the 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 Carolian boost. So so now, okay, now we can perhaps um, contrast and compare the the, the three space times. They really only they look the same. A four different uh, different uh, geometric structures. You know, clock and ruler in the Galilei case, proper distance in the in the Minkowski case, and uh, people call this the Carroll vector field and the spatial metric. Uh, but you can. Forget those words. Um, this this kappa and, and h for for the for the Carroll case, and the relativity groups they look they have a very similar structure. They're all examples of things called kinematical groups, and they uh, they consist of orthogonal transformations, uh, space time translations, and boosts. And the only and the, the real difference uh, is is what the boost, you know, is the boost actually. So so let me let me at least give you. Um, so a contrasting picture of these things. So um, okay, so so um, so Carol. Okay, so Galilei, Carol, and Minkowski space times. There, they are distinguished by the boosts, really, by the action of the boosts. So, so what are the boosts? Okay, so in the Galilei case, remember, let, let me let me write this uh, in terms of just x and t, and the Galilei case, the boosts basically uh, leave t alone, and they. So, so what is a boost? Galilei boost is is uh, what you do is you you um, you start moving with a constant velocity um, in a in a given direction. So that's uh, so this is a Galilei boost. The Carroll boost is something completely weird. Uh, basically, uh, t x remains alone, and then t changes by v dot x. And the Minkowski boost, the, the Lorentzian boost is 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 much more complicated. Um, I'll copy the formula. This is, a, this is a good exercise to find out what what these things look like. So the first thing to do is uh, you want to boost by a vector b. So what you do is you decompose that vector b into a uh, component along x and a component uh, perpendicular to x. So, um, or the other way around, you you take sorry, you 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 decompose x into component along the boost and perpendicular to the boost. So, um, so let me, um, let me define, let me write X as X parallel plus X perpendicular and X perpendicular is going to be X minus X dot V divided by V squared V, right? This is just the perpendicular projection. Um, and then what is, and, and the, 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 I mean, this thing here is, of course, x parallel. Okay, so what happens here? Well, the perpendicular bit doesn't, not, nothing happens to it. And then what you get is uh, the hyperbolic cos cosine of v. v is the norm of the vector v. Um, uh, times x perp plus uh, t, I'm just copying from the calculation that I did. Uh, it's a good exercise. Um, and then the other one, you get T cosh V plus shine V over V. X dot V. So you see it's much more complicated. So these are the, these are the Lorentz boosts. Well, boost. Okay, so that's uh, that's that's hopefully gives you a feel for you know these three uh, Klein uh, Klein geometries, so these homogeneous models for uh, 
for for space time they're not the only models of course i mean space time in gr is going to be some lorentzian manifold not necessarily minkowski similarly there are galilean um, space times and carolian space times which are not uh, necessarily these ones, but they're modeled in the Cartan sense uh, on these uh, on these space times. So um, the you may wonder. I mean, the the relativity groups here they're all subgroups of the affine group. So how do they sit inside the affine group? So um, the this is something I call the triforce of space times. I just just let me let me draw it for you. So uh, it's a funny. Uh, I'm not very good at drawing this, but okay, something I just let me just put it. Okay, so um I'll use a bigger thing. Okay, so um let's call this th th this is just a picture of subgroups of it's a cartoon for subgroups of um of the affine group. So this is Poincare group. Let's say it, it looks like the, the Poincare group is somehow depicted in this cartoon by this uh, rhombus. Then um, in a different color, let me do the, uh, for example, the Galilei group. So it's going to be the Galilei group is going to look something like this. There is intersection between them. That's why I'm doing it like this. Um, and then the Carol one, um, something like this. Right, so there is intersection. So, so the intersection of any two is the intersection of all three. And what is this intersection? Well, it's called the Aristotle group. Uh, I'm not going to say anything more about Aristotelian geometry, but uh, but the intersection of you know A is the intersection of of any two of them. And it's the intersection of all three. And this is called the Aristotle group. And what it is is, well, you get rid of the boosts. In Aristotle's space time, space and time, it shouldn't really be called a space time because space and time don't talk to each other. There is, There are no boosts. So it's just orthogonal transformations of space and then translations in space and translations in time. So it's called the Aristotle group. And of course, you can imagine, uh, you know, there's an Arist Aristotle space time, which is A4 together with, uh, you know, kind of a, well, it's really just, uh, it, it's A3 cross A1. <laughs> and an A3, what you have is a uh, Euclidean uh, inner product. That's all. Okay, so this is this is what I call, if you like, uh, the legend of Zelda, this is a triforce of space times. But I want to ignore Aristotle in this uh, in these lectures and basically consider um, you know uh, the the other three. Okay, so any questions before I change uh, tack? No questions. Okay, so what we want to do now is to uh, take these models, Galilei spacetime, Carroll spacetime, Minkowski spacetime, to be uh, Klein models for Cartan geometries. But the thing is, these Cartan geometries are going to be very special. They're really G structures. So um, there, was a, there was a question over here. Oh, yeah, okay. So what, what was the interpretation of the vector K in the Carolian spacetime? This is the part I didn't really understand intuitively. Well, yeah, exactly. So, you know, uh, it just happens to be uh, the, the Carroll group leaves this, the homogeneous Carroll group leaves a vector invariant. But, okay, so you you can, you can let, let's think of it, let's, you know, when we when we start discussing um, Carolian geometry, so more general spaces with with this G structure, you can ask what is this vector? So, so okay, so this is this is gonna give rise to a privileged vector field on your Carolian manifold. And one, one way to understand Carolian manifolds is to think of them as the uh, null hypersurfaces in Lorentzian uh, manifolds. So you give you a Lorentzian manifold, let's say in this case would be of dimension five, and you consider some null hypersurface. And a, gen a gen general class of these things could be done by considering, for example, null congruences of, uh, you know, you you have some 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 null vector, uh, non null vector field in this Lorentzian space time, and you look at uh, geodesic ge the geodesic congruence that this uh, vector will uh, would generate, and this is what the Carolian vector field is is um, is 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 the generator is the is the null is the generator of the null congruence, 
and uh, and the uh, and and this and the spatial metric what it is is the induced so the the okay you're looking at a null hypersurface so the metric uh, restricts to something degenerate there but when you quotient by the line bundle generated by this this vector field uh you have a, a positive definite metric on the on the quotient um yeah, I don't know if this answers your question, but that, that's basically the that, that's kind of the generic Carolian geometry. It's no hypersurface in Lorentzian manifold and, uh, and 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 sometimes, well, there's a generator of these. You have a family of null hypersurfaces and there's a generate uh, there's this a vector field. This, this this null hypersurfaces can be thought of as the um the okay, thank you. That's a little better. The, the tangents to this hypersurface the perpendicular complement, well, perpendicular in the Lorentzian sense of this vector field. Black hole horizons are Carolian, for example. Scry, which is uh, uh, null infinity, it's conformally Carolian. So you don't get quite a Carolian structure, but you get a conformal Carolian structure. Um, yeah. The, I'm not sure if that, that answered the question. Thank you. It gives a little bit more intuition. Okay, we we might see some examples. Uh, although, uh, I guess, uh, yeah. Well, I, I I'm I'm happy to in another lecture if you want to give me to to give you some more examples of 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 these space lines. I mean, there are many. Just because well, null hypersurface in Lorentzian manifolds are are quite common, so it's not uh, it's not a strange thing. Um. Okay. Uh. Right. So. Let me then start, uh, I guess, saying a few things about where, where we want to go from, from here. Okay, so that, okay, so these are, these are the, now, um, I should have given a name to the previous section. It was called, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, space, you know, Klein, Klein models for space time. So now, now we want to talk about G structures and I'm, I'm just going to basically say say a few words just to just to uh, introduce notation. So, um, and then we're going to look at the G structures associated to these um, to these models of space times that I just mentioned. Okay, so G structures. So what do we have? Okay, so suppose you have some manifold M, and then as you know, there's the frame bundle, and this is a principal right. Uh, GLNR bundle. And then, if you take some subgroup G inside GLNR, you can restrict to uh, frames which are related not by GLNR but by G. So you can this, so so P uh, so G structure uh, is a, a principal. Uh, G sub bundle of the frame bundle, and this comes always with uh, some additional structure, namely the so-called so soldering form. So, um, so there's there's a soldering form theta, which is a one form on P uh, with values in the Sorry, in um, in Rn. Um, and what does it do? Is well, it takes just just to remind you of the definition. If you have a vector which is tangent to the let, let me call it tangent at, at a frame u to this uh, to the to the total space of this uh, G structure um, theta on V. Okay, sorry. Uh, theta on V is going to be what? Well, is the coordinate vector field, is the, is the coordinate vector, sorry, the coordinate vector of the projection of V down to the manifold. So it's going to be the, the coordinate vector of, I guess I didn't write, okay, I'll tell you what pi is in a moment, um, relative to the, to the frame U. And what is pi? Well, pi is the projection of P to M. Sorry. 
Okay, so, um, right, so, um, um, I'm not going to say a lot about these structures, but I'm, I'm assuming that you're familiar with them. I'll just remind you of a few things. Ba basically, uh, the soldering form allows you to, um, to it gives you isomorphisms between uh, associated vector bundles to this uh, to this principal G bundle and uh, and bundles over M that we might be familiar with. So um, okay, so so given okay, so given uh, any representation, let me call it V. Let's say finite dimensional linear representation of G, um, we we get an associated vector bundle. Uh, P cross G B sitting over M. And in particular, we could take V to be Rn because G is sitting inside G L and R, so it has a natural uh, representation in Rn, right? So so E.g. take uh, take V to be Rn, uh, and then uh, this associated bundle. This is called the fake tangent bundle. Uh, But the, the point is that the soldering form gives you an isomorphism between the fake tangent bundle and the actual tangent bundle. So, so this, this, uh, this theta, um, it gives, uh, so, so, so it gives an iso. Um, from the fake tangent bundle. Well, back, maybe the other way around. From the tangent bundle. Uh, to the fake tangent bundle. Sorry, not V, but R. Okay, good. Um, more more generally, uh, you can take uh, you can you can um, consider not R n but say tensors uh, over R n. So so more generally, you can consider, for example, uh, a representation where V is. Uh, let me call them R s tensors on R n. So what do I mean by that? I mean, take Rn, tensor it R times, and then tensor it with the dual S times, right? And then uh, the, the soldering form gives you an isomorphism between the associated vector bundle um, and well, maybe an isomorphism going the other way. Between the bundle of RS tensors, so over manifold, right? Because this this is induced by the soldering part. Okay, so um, essentially, what you get is you get a kind of a dictionary between representation theory of the structure group and bundles on over over the manifold with with a G structure. Um, so, what happens? Well, representations go to vector bundles. Uh, sub representations go to sub bundles and G equivariant maps between representations going to bundle maps, um, and maybe uh, I'll finish with maybe one example. Um, so, Okay, so uh, the the standard example is you know take um, well let me say that so, something uh, first many times the way the way you select these subgroups of GLNR is essentially by saying this is a subgroup that preserves some you know some tensors or some some uh, you know that had, so so for example uh, we we saw before that uh, the relativity groups in um, in these space times, there are subgroups of the affine groups which uh, um, which uh, preserve some structure, and this structure I'll give it in terms of tensors, like a vector or maybe a one form or you know a rank two tensor of some description. So um, so 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 this is you know at least in my experience that's typically the way uh, I select the G structures to study is the ones that G is the subgroup of GLNR that preserves some objects in some tensor in some representations of GLNR. So so a typical example that we all know is uh, is uh, Riemannian geometry, right? So you, you take uh, you take G to be and of course you could do pseudo Riemannian as well. You took G to be ON inside GLNR. 
And this is precisely uh, the subgroup that preserves the standard in our uh, Euclidean inner product on, on our end, right? So G, uh, so it preserves um, standard Euclidean inner product, the, the dot product, I guess, Euclidean. Um, Okay, and um, let's say, um, suppose that uh, S is a local section of the, I suppose you have a G, uh, you have a G structure in the sense of ON structure on an N-dimensional manifold. And suppose you have a local section through the G structure. So I can write it as, um, you know, uh, as a local, so it's a local orthogonal frame. Um, and then uh, it has, um, sorry, let me just, I, I haven't said it's orthonormal yet. So, so, so local frame in P, this P over M is a G structure with that G. And then we can look at the, um, uh, the, the pullback by this, there's a local section of P, and, uh, and, and remember on P, we have the soldering form to one form with values in Rn, so I can pull it back to by this local section. And what I get is uh, uh, an n tuple of one forms. And this, of course, this, 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 the, the, this, this is the, um, the canonical equal co frame. And then what I can do is I can say, okay, well, this is this Euclidean inner product. Uh, let, me, let me assume that this, this, this Euclidean inner product has some. Um, well, I know what it is. I mean, it's just this quote unquote delta function. I mean, it's just the Kronecker delta. So what I can do is I can say, I can define G locally as delta AB, theta A, theta B. So this is a, this is a local um, local uh, description in the validity of where, where this section lives um, of the, of the, of the Riemannian metric. But the point is that because these are frames in this G structure when you change. So an overlaps is going to change by a local G transformation, but Delta this tensor is G invariant. Therefore these local descriptions glue and they give you a global. Um, so these guys are, they, 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 they glue well. And what you get is a Riemannian metric. So the idea is that uh, G structures um carry well g structures where g is defined as the uh as the subgroup of glnr which leaves some objects invariant these objects uh, are going to give rise to characteristic tensor fields of any manifold with such a g structure so so in general so 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 g invariant let me just put it this way g invariant tensors in you know Tensors of whatever they, they give rise to uh, characteristic tensor fields. And the example there is just the standard one of the of of you know we, you, you take G to be O N. This lives in variant this Euclidean inner product, and then you can using the local frames you can cook up local descriptions of a tensor field, which happens to glue well because of the invariance of the, of the tensor. And therefore you get some characteristic tensor fields. So, um, okay, so we, we're going to essentially in the, in the next lecture, because now, okay, I've been talking for an hour now, so I guess I'll stop. But the, um, the, in, the, in the next lecture, what I want to do is just to define the, um, uh, the well, we all know what, what is the Cartan geometry has in Minkowski space-time. It's going to be Lorentzian manifold. So that, that doesn't require much uh, that that everybody understands. Um, I will I will describe uh, um, Carolian's structure and and Galilean structure, and then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, I'll I'll make some comments about the adapted connections to these uh, to these uh, to these structures and say something about their intrinsic torsion, and. Uh, that 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 will probably take a whole lecture, and then in the third lecture, I hope to talk about the pea brain uh, story. Um, I hope that's the plan. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I think I'll finish here today. Are there any questions for Jose?
if nobody else didn't have one. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so I'm afraid this is going to be a question about an offhand remark that you made at the very beginning of your lecture, um, but I'd still like to ask it. So suppose you and I have a plan to meet for coffee at four o'clock at a particular cafe. Luckily, this cafe is at the town square and there's a nice big clock tower there, which is not accelerating with respect to the cafe. We are also rocket ship enthusiasts, so we intend to go whizzing around the universe in our rockets before we meet up, but we keep careful track of time and we arrive when the clock tower at the cafe reaches four o'clock uh, from each of our respective perspectives. Do we succeed in meeting or not? Well, okay, so first of all, um, I mean, uh, accelerating is not an inertial, inertial, I mean, we're not in, 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 in we're not in, we're not in inertial frames, right? We are so, not. Um, I mean, the, the, the clock is not invariant under non-inertial transformations. I mean, I would have to think whether, uh, you know, but, um, but there's no reason a priori why the the we should I mean if our clocks are not inertial are not in inertial if we're not in inertial frames. Oh, uh, Jose, we are going by the clock at the cafe. You don't see them if you if if you travel you don't see them right because you are different uh, point of space time. Well, I mean, if we arrive whatever however we travel accelerated or not, if we arrive at the at the at the you know, if we arrive at the square and the clock is, is the, you know, it, you arrive and I arrive, we see the same time in the clock. Of course, we're there at the same time. So we meet. Yeah. Right. Then I don't think uh, absolute simultaneity, simultaneity is necessary for meeting for coffee at a given cafe. Well, I mean, the point is, okay, we need, well, okay. I mean, <laughs> it was, don't, don't take the statement so seriously. I mean, it was more like, uh, I mean, we, we it, it is the case, however, that I think you agree that uh, at, at the, at everyday experience, people agree on simultaneous events, right? I mean, right. The, the, um, that, that's what I was trying to say. I mean, I, I talked about the meeting of the cafe just kind of as a, as a side remark. But I mean, uh, all, all I'm saying is that uh, at the speeds that we normally uh, reach in, you know, walking or on a bus or whatever, uh, clearly um, there is there is a notion of simultaneity. But of course, it's fake in the sense that you know, if we manage to accelerate to speeds close to the speed of light, then obviously that's not that's not uh, there is no. A bit, a bit because um, this was about simultaneously simultaneity at the same space time event, not separated space time events in any way. Yeah, correct. So that's I mean I agree. It, it okay maybe it's a bad bad analogy, but um, all, all I was trying to say is that uh, you know in 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 the non relativistic. Uh, regime where we normally live, um, there is a notion of uh, two two inertial observers will agree on the time difference between two, between two events. And if the two events are simultaneous for one observer, they will be simultaneous for the other. That just doesn't happen in Lorentzian yeah, in relativistic physics. Thanks. That's all I was trying to say. I mean, don't take the you know. I agree that the meet. I mean, the the, the thing about meeting in in in. You know, for coffee, of course, that's a slightly more degenerate situation. Um, yeah, uh, I'd like to go back to this question which actually Henrik asked about this vector field. I, I actually don't understand. You get it as a limit, right? But I, in a limit, I just see direction field, not really vector field. Sorry, I, I don't hear you very well. Can you? Uh, um, so, 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 so back to this limit, C goes to infinity, right? Yeah. So I don't see in the limit vector field. I see in the limit just direction field and transversal metric. You mean C goes to zero? Or C goes to okay. which? Yeah. C, 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 yes. No, wait. Yeah. C goes to zero, yes. Okay. 
Um, well, I mean, the light cone is uh, is collapsing onto uh, onto the timeline, and that gives you the vector, that gives you direction. Without norm, but norm has gone on the limit. Correct. Um, so you're saying that you don't get a vector field, you actually get a, a line. Yeah, and I think what you get, you get, well, in, in, in deformed context, you, you get a foliation and you get transversal Riemannian structure. Right. By it's transversal, yeah, I mean, the, you, you quotient by that line. Yes, that's correct. So is the, the question is whether, um, I guess, is, is it the case that in these, uh, uh, so the Carroll group, you you could you could say the, let's look at the group not that preserves the vector but that preserves the line. Yeah. But I think is is that is is that the same group, or it's different? Uh, let's see. There's one dimension difference. No, there will be difference of scaling. Yeah. But it's a bigger group, so it's not a um, it's not a contract. I mean, at the Lie algebra level, let's say the the the, the the algebra that you're talking about is not a contraction of. Um, of Poincaré. No, it's contraction of conformal. Correct. Right. That's is... not the Carroll group. I mean, um, so, um, yeah. OK. I mean, so you're asking why? Yeah, OK. Um, I agree. The subgroup of affine group, which preserves the line, it's uh, one dimension. I mean, you could, you could, you. It's not, by the way, it's it's not um, it's not dilatations huh, in general because you're only allowed to dilate time. Uh, in some sense, the the, the 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 spatial orthogonal transformations this really preserve the norm. So you cannot you're you're not relaxing that. Um, some. I mean, here when, when this foliation is one dimensional, that's not really big difference, but. Mm -hmm. and generalization when this foliation is, is a higher dimension, then of course it, it really doesn't matter whether you fix any coordination of it or or, or it's just foliation. And we so when, when we discuss P brain uh, stuff, it's going to be a little bit like that. So um, so now you won't have um, so the idea is that these G structures that I'll be talking about this is this is uh, what we would call particle G structure. So so the idea is that. Um, you know, it's it's word lines of of particles and whatever. But if you if you're talking about p brain, so these are extended objects. And now what happens is that the time the the, the p brain will, as it moves in a, in a given space time, will will uh, define the world volume, and uh, you you will have um, there's a notion of a kind of a local speed of light. So it's going to be a speed of light on the world volume, uh, which might be different from the speed of light uh, in the bulk. So it could be that this this it could it could be that this P brain is 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 uh, is moving in a in a Lorentzian manifold. So or in Minkowski space, let's say we have a notion of global speed of light. But then what you're going to be doing is you're going to you're going to allow yourself to um, to, to 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 kind of uh, uh, rescale or or send the the speed of light that is in directions that are tangent to the to 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 the world line to the world volume of this brain. Uh, to zero or to infinity, but leave the other ones uh, untouched, and that gives rise to these uh, p brain Galilei or p brain Carolian structures, of which when p is zero, uh, is the ones that we are discussing now. Um, and indeed, I mean, uh, there is a question there whether you want to preserve, um, strictly speaking, the sort of, you know, a metric in uh on on the world volume or a conformal class of metrics on the world volume so um when you when you discuss the carolian structure at infi at, at infinity in asymptotically flat space times uh scry for example minkowski space time right so you take scry which is the endpoint of null no no future pointing null geodesics scry plus scry plus has a conformal carolian structure so the the the, the metric um you you don't you know, the metric you you have no control over the scale so, uh, yeah, and and in some sense, you might argue that the conformal Carolian structure is actually more interesting than the than Carolian structures. They certainly arise naturally in in flat space, uh, asymptotically flat space times. Okay. Uh, 